Hello and welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm Monica Weitzel and I'll be your host for a series of short interviews with community leaders about how they can help you make the best of this tough situation we're all going through. Instead of Metro East Studios, I'm talking to you from my home and we'll talk with our guests remotely to keep us all safe. Today I'm talking with Dr. Jeffrey Eisen, Chief Medical Officer for Cascadia Behavioral Healthcare. Dr. Eisen has an impressive background, including being on the faculty at Harvard Medical School and recently being appointed by Governor Kate Brown to serve on Oregon's Behavioral Health Advisory Board. Welcome, Dr. Eisen. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you, too, in this virtual format, Monica. <laughs> it's a little weird, uh, but I think, I think it'll work, and I appreciate you making the time to do that. Now, are you at home right now? or? I actually am at home right now. So at Cascadia, we've moved a lot of our services to uh, remote approaches. And so part of my work I'm doing from home. And then I also am working at our urgent mental health walk-in clinic for some hours, seeing some folks in person who might not have the opportunity to connect with clinicians or providers over telephone or over video just because they don't have the access to such services. So we're still offering some in-person work and I'm doing that during the week as well. Wow, I'm sure you're keeping extremely busy. And, and we do, I think everyone in the community really appreciates the, the medical professionals that are stepping up because it's, it's yes. a really tough time. Uh, you know, you mentioned the um, mental health and, and you work with people in the mental health field all the time. Uh, have you seen this pandemic affect people um, in different ways in their daily lives? I mean, how are, how are people coping? So that's a really good question, Monica. The reality is that this is an incredibly anxiety provoking, stressful and overwhelming time for many people. And the uncertainty associated with COVID-19 um, brings that to light, that we know that this has been an epidemic in many places across the country and the world. And we've seen some of those concerns in our own communities. And so it's a really scary time. And part of what we're seeing is that. So all individuals, um, will naturally feel the effects of this. And then other individuals certainly have increased episodes of depression and anxiety and other factors as well um, that we are um, grateful and hopeful to be able to help with. Yeah, that's, those are some really good points. It's, it's not just people who have previously suffered mental health issues. It's, it's pretty much everybody is affected by this in one way or another. How would you suggest that you know, just everyday citizens who are normally in, in relatively good mental health, how, how should they try to cope with these, this situation? Yes. Well, there's a number of areas that I can briefly step through in terms of how to cope with such a difficult situation that we are dealing with now. And these are steps that I am using personally, and there are steps that I'm advising my friends and family and others on as well, too. Um, you know, the first thing to do is to acknowledge that these feelings and emotions that we are having right now are normal and valid. And we are all feeling a heightened sense of anxiety and stress and um, challenge around everything we're facing right now. It really is a difficult time. And so allowing one to just realize that that's part of this process um, is an important place to start. Another place I recommend as well is that with learning about COVID, we become more confident and become more knowledgeable. So the basic facts of social distancing, of trying to stay at least six feet away from other individuals, and the factors we've learned about the importance of hand washing and hand sanitizer, and those factors are incredibly important. When we know those tasks, it can provide us some sense of control that there are things we can do to help prevent um, either getting COVID-19 or, or spreading it to other people. Um, so that's another factor too. Um, and then keeping your routine as normal as possible. Um, it's a tough thing to do right now, but if there are things that you enjoy and spending um, quality uh, conversation with friends or family, even if you have to do it from afar, are really important uh, mechanisms too. Um, and then lastly, I would note that when you reach out and try to support others, it can help you feel so much better. So for example, spending time asking someone how they are doing, reaching out to a family member or someone in your family who might be older, who needs a little extra support, could, can be a really nice way to help you feel like you're doing something amidst this challenge. Those are, those are all really, really good and um, valuable 
points to make, Dr. Eisen, and, and I, I think we can all pretty much relate to those. Um, you know, I was talking with uh, my director, Emily, just before this, and we were talking about uh, going shopping and how difficult that was and how we bring the food home and bring the groceries home and sit on the porch and wash everything before we take it in the house, you know, yes. as one designated person going to the store. And, and just little things like that that we do all the time are, are a bigger deal and uh, a little more stress uh, stress inducing, but but being aware and having that information, like you said, really does help. You know, gives us a little more control over over our situation, I think. Um, and reaching out, very important. It does. It is important. And you brought up a very good point of the grocery store. So, for example, at the grocery store, first and foremost, an incredible shout out to all of the grocery workers who are on the front lines working on this, similar to our healthcare workers who are on the front lines as well, myself and, and, and many of my colleagues. Um, in addition to that, you know, when you're at the grocery store and you're checking out, of course you wanna keep a reasonable safe distance from the person checking out the groceries. And it's also okay to say, how are you doing? right? How is your day going? This must be tough for you. And it's tough for me too. I think those conversations really connect us as a community that we all are in it together. I agree. And, and thanking them for being there you know, yeah. because uh, they don't have to be. I mean, maybe they feel like they have to be, but uh, it's, it's to our benefit that people are out there doing their jobs when they can. And so um, I appreciate it. And I'm, I'm sure that most of our viewers do too. So saying that and telling people are very important things. Is there anything else that we should know about helping us to keep sane during this time and, um, and to help other people during this time? I'd say one other point I might emphasize has to do with the media. So Ooh. as we know, there is 24 hour media around <laughs> coronavirus and COVID-19 and a lot of social media too. So my recommendation is to Listen to the media, but don't overexpose yourself to it. Have some limits in terms of how much you're listening to the media. And if you really want to know some facts that you can feel confident about, going to websites that have great information are important, such as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. The CDC website to me has great information for everyone and it's very understandable and useful. And that way you feel that if you're, you need to get information, you can get it from someone who really knows their stuff. I couldn't agree more. So yes, and I, I feel like listening too much to uh, uh, too many sites and checking out too, many, too much information can be overwhelming and confusing. So get your trusted sites and Stay connected with people and um, hang in there because this is right. going to be this is going to be a, a rough road. But I really appreciate you coming on, Dr. Eisen. Thank you for all that you're doing and the people you're working with. And um, please stay safe out there. Thank you for that, and thank you for um, talking about this concern and helping our community stay safe and healthy. You're very welcome. And thanks for watching Community Hotline at Home. We have more interviews coming up soon, so watch for them on Metro East channels and on your favorite social media sites. I'm Monica Weitzel. Stay safe.